comes to rock and roll mysteries, there are few that stand out like the death of Iron Butterfly bassist Philip Taylor Kramer. Kramer's story began on a rock and roll stage, but ended tragically. What happened to this musician turned scientist is a mystery with a heart wrenching twist, and it lingers without resolution. Perfectly fit the times. But sudden fame and non stop touring would prove to be a bad combination for Iron Butterfly, and in 1972, they split up. But just two years after the band's breakup, an enthusiastic bassist and singer named Philip Taylor Kramer convinced Iron Butterfly to reunite. Drummer Ron Bushy credits Kramer with motivating them to record again. In my mind I see a mirage We uh, got an album deal with MCA and put out uh, two albums, Scorching Beauty and Sun and Steel. But despite Philip Kramer's best efforts, the comeback stayed back. Dropping his first name, Philip, Taylor Kramer decided to change more than his name. He kicked the music habit and went in an entirely new direction, moving from rock and roll to rocket science. After Taylor got his electrical engineering degree, it was around the time that aerospace was just booming. Taylor went to work for a team that designed the inertial guidance system on the MX missile. Taylor's inspiration came from his father, with whom he had worked on physics projects his entire life. As a physics professor, Taylor's father struggled for 30 years to do what was considered impossible, to communicate or send information through gravity waves. Taylor, who by now had become a computer genius, took his father's theories one step further. Remarkably, he was close to putting the final touches on this new form of communicating, sending messages literally through space. He was about to unveil these secrets to the world. We were working towards trying to find something faster than the speed of light. Something that would totally uh, revolutionize the way we communicate today and travel. To put that in a nutshell, we're talking beam me up Scotty. That's it. As Taylor came closer to the answers he was searching for, he became totally consumed and distracted, working endless hours, depriving himself of sleep. He hadn't slept for probably 10 days to two weeks before his disappearance. When you're sleep deprived, and as my brother was, I think that he just mentally got where it, things were very um, stressful for him. No one knows if what happened next was a result of his mental state or of something more sinister. On February 12, 1995, Philip Taylor Kramer took a routine trip to Los Angeles International Airport to pick up a friend. But before the friend even deboarded the plane, Kramer mysteriously vanished from the airport. No one saw Taylor Kramer at LAX, but a parking record proves he was there. He signed an IOU to pay the $3 fee he didn't have with him and drove away. During the next 45 minutes, Taylor made several calls from his cell phone. He called his wife, his father, his friends, and he told all of them the same thing. He said, Bush, it's Taylor. I love you more than life itself, Bush. And then he hung up. At 11.59 a.m., Taylor made one last call. A call to 911. 911, can I help you? Yeah, this is Bill Taylor Kramer. Uh huh. This is 911, can I help you, sir? Yes, you can. I'm going to kill myself. Okay, what is your name? Hello? Hello? That was the Hello? last communication we had from him. And it was my brother's voice. Uh, I've heard the tape, and it was definitely my brother's voice. This is 911. Can I help you, sir? Yes, you can. I'm going to kill myself. Hello? No one ever saw Philip Taylor Kramer alive again. But to Taylor's father, Ray, the 911 message was not exactly what it seemed. Well, Taylor had told me 
a long time before there was people giving him problems they wanted what he was doing and uh, he didn't want to give it up and several of them had threatened him and uh, he told me he says if, if I ever say I'm going to kill myself don't you believe it he says I'm going to be needing help no suicide note no body no van in spite of that and of the forewarning Taylor gave his father, the FBI believed he committed suicide. His family and friends thought otherwise. When I think of my brother as committing suicide, I can't picture him doing it. And my brother would not have left his family. <laughs> he did a thousand sit-ups in the morning. Nobody's going to kill themselves and do a thousand sit-ups first. The Kramers grasped at any bit of hope they were offered, but their hopes were dashed countless times over the years. Only one thing was certain. Taylor Kramer and his unique scientific knowledge and research had vanished. Philip Taylor Kramer, the iron butterfly musician turned scientist, was nowhere to be found. He had been working on a revolutionary method of transporting information and matter through space. A discovery his family believed was so valuable that Kramer had reason to fear for his safety. When Kramer mysteriously vanished during a trip to Los Angeles airport, those fears may have been realized. The only evidence left behind were a series of phone calls, some to family, some to friends, and one to 911. Hello, can I help you? Yeah, this is Taylor Kramer. Uh -huh. This is 911. Can I help you, sir? Yes, you can. I'm going to kill myself. Okay, what is your name? Hello? Hello? Investigators Hello? concluded this was a suicide, but Kramer's family refused to accept their findings. They believed that there was foul play and that perhaps those who knew about Philip's discoveries were somehow involved in his disappearance. However, the only thing that Taylor's family really knew was that their loved one was simply missing. For over four years, they continued their search for answers. On the afternoon of May 29, 1999, some of their questions were finally answered. The Kramers received incredible news that both brought them relief and broke their hearts. In a canyon a few miles away from Los Angeles airport, hikers stumbled upon a van. Inside the van were human remains. After a few agonizing days, dental records proved beyond question that the body found in the van was that of Philip Taylor Kramer. One part of the mystery was solved, but another was only beginning. We were under a lot of hope that possibly my brother was alive somewhere or that maybe someday we would see him again. But now it opens up more questions and we need to know what happened to my brother. A few days after the grisly discovery, his sister Kathy visited the place where her lost brother had finally been found. This isn't what they would call a suicide cliff. You don't necessarily die going off. There were some teenagers that had stolen a car and they were trying to dispose of the evidence and went down and actually got out with just cuts and scratches. So this, this is not the type of a mountainside that would guarantee that someone could die. This raises the question, did Taylor Kramer drive off the cliff to his death or was he driven there already dead? The only thing that this has closed is chapter one of suspense because the suspense part as to where is he and the wondering part is over. But it's just the beginning. Every day, the family asks themselves, was it murder, suicide, or an accident? In spite of their continuing search for answers, the truth may never be uncovered. For Kramer's sister Kathy, music is the bond that keeps her brother's memory alive. She even wrote a song called, Brother, My Brother, in his honor. Oh, brother.
Brother, brother, where can you be? He's missed very much by his family and friends. There's a day goes doesn't go by that I don't think of him. Often. A lifetime of feelings and memories. Oh, brother, brother, where can you be? A rock star turned computer who is alone in his car on the freeway. A desperate call to 911, and then nothing. The man and his vehicle literally vanish into thin air. What happened to Taylor Kramer? Police have their first break tonight in the mysterious disappearance of a former member of the band, the Iron Butterfly. Bass player Taylor Kramer vanished without a trace nine days ago. But late today, police found a recording of a 911 call Kramer made just before he disappeared. Sylvia Gambardella has the story. Police say Taylor Kramer made the 911 call at noon nine days ago from his Aerostar minivan while driving in Agora Hills. It lasted 31 seconds, but police will not release the contents of that conversation. It was the first break Kramer's family received about his disappearance. Today they held an emotional news conference pleading for the public's help in finding him. I want him to know we love him and we miss him and we, you know, if there's any way he could contact us. Police say the 42-year-old Thousand Oaks electrical engineer was a good family man devoted to his wife and two kids. They say he was on his way to pick up a business associate at LAX when he disappeared. His wife said he called her from his cellular phone to say the plane was late and he would meet her later for dinner, but he never returned. Usually in a missing person, there's a common denominator, such as a, um, uh, a domestic problem or narcotics or uh, alcohol. In this, there's no indication that there's another woman involved. There's no indication of alcohol or drugs or anything of that nature. Kramer is perhaps best known as the former bass player for the rock and roll group Iron Butterfly. That's him second from the left. The group's big hit in the late 60s was Inagata De Vida. He's got um, a heart of gold and an incredible mind. Uh, he, can, um, he can figure out anything. Um, and have never known the guy to, to quit. And it's that survivor attitude that Kramer's family is counting on and finding him soon unharmed. Sylvia Gambardella, Channel 9 News. Family members are resuming their search for Taylor Kramer tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock. If you can help in the search, you can show up at the address that you're seeing on the screen. It is 299 West Hillcrest Drive. That's just off Moore Park, Suite 200 in Thousand Oaks. For more information, call area code 805-371-0500.